Hey folks, this clip is brought to you by Farm Bureau Health Plans. For better coverage, better rates, and better service, go to fbhp.com slash ATOZ. That is Farm Bureau Health Plans. Now, to spring football, it kicked off today. And uh, this is obviously always an exciting day because usually means the weather's starting to warm up. And do you freaking, hey, excuse me, weather, could you warm up, please? It was freezing here in Knoxville today. Um, but usually the weather is warming up. Obviously, you get to watch football. All the, the clips start rolling out from practice sessions that happened today where everybody, oh, there's Nico was throwing, Joe was throwing. We got to see uh, uh, Cam Selden was one of the guys that came up. All of this, these new guys. Uh, it's exciting. I love it. Uh, and then uh, Josh Heupel spoke at press conference today. Uh, how much of this did you see, Zach? Yeah, quite a bit of it. Uh, the weirdest thing was seeing Nico in that number 12 jersey. Uh, that yeah. was kind of different uh, after seeing him in that, the number eight for pretty much all of his recruitment and all the you know Polynesian Bowl and different things that he's participated in. That was kind of odd. But outside of that, kind of arbitrary thought. I mean, it seemed like plenty of reason to be excited. I mean, you got Josh Heupel talking about how, how much deeper the team's going to be in year three and how they can – build some depth at some positions and have competition that they haven't really had in the past. And specifically on the defensive side of the ball, that that will be huge. And then you had newcomers out there, Cam Selden, interesting note that, that he seems to be working at running back and, and Heupel talked about him getting a shot at that position uh, to begin with, even though he was listed as a wide receiver, pretty sure he's still going to be used in some unique creative ways, splitting him out wide. He's such a unique talent that, you know, perfect offense for for him to to be in because Josh Heupel and, and Joey Hosley and the rest of the staff will definitely find a way to create some mismatches with him and and speaking of mismatches Dante Thornton another guy you know the Oregon transfer wide receiver worked out of the slot today uh I wouldn't make too much out of that because I think they plan on moving him around a lot because again with those mismatches you can really utilize him where he can play inside he can play outside uh, for today, it seemed like he was taking reps behind Squirrel White. But again, that to me, that's just where they had him today. He'll probably move yeah. outside, work there some. Who who knows how that rotation will actually end up, you know, working out. We we kind of have assumed that they will just use three wide receivers like they did last year for most of the season. But you, I mean, you don't know. I mean, Hypo adjusts and adapts on the fly. So he might find a way to to keep some bodies fresh. Maybe he rotates a little more. Maybe they run some some more four wide sets. Who knows how they approach that, but that's obviously a good problem for them to have. And then I thought the most interesting note of the day, because I think this is, it might, I don't think it's an underrated storyline. I think it's a big storyline. I just think things like the wide receivers and, and Selden and Nico and Joe Milton will get more attention. The offensive line. And uh, it seemed like they said John Campbell was uh, working more at left tackle, which is, he's the Miami transfer which is what he played at Miami, we kind of assumed that he would fill in with Darnell Wright's role at right tackle. It was like they had shifted Gerald Mincy over to right tackle for today. I mean, it's early, so they're obviously just trying some things out and seeing what works. They left Crawford at left tackle, who him and Mincy split those uh, you know snaps last season. So that's kind of interesting. I mean, if they feel like Gerald Mincy's better on the right side and Campbell's the better left tackle, it would make sense to flip them. Maybe you have a situation like last season where Darnell Wright flips from left tackle to right tackle and ends up having the best year of his career, you know, in 2022, where he's playing every snap at right tackle. Probably going to be a top 20 draft pick now. I mean, it's something to watch there. So it'll be interesting to see how that, you know, the offensive line comes together. Farm Bureau Health Plans has been serving Tennesseans for over 75 years, and much has changed in Tennessee over the years, but some has stayed the same. Farm Bureau Health Plans has always valued personal relationships, especially when it comes to good health and good service. Plan on Farm Bureau Health Plans for health, dental, and vision. For better coverage, better rates, and better service, go to fbhp.com slash ATOZ or walk into one of their 200-plus locations across the state of Tennessee. That is fbhp.com slash ATOZ, Farm Bureau Health Plans. Yeah, there's so many positions on defense more than offense. But, I mean, on offense, the offensive line is the main spot where I look. There's so many positions where there, there's stuff to figure out. But the the main thing is that I think for probably the first time in Josh Heupel's time at Tennessee, you actually really have dudes to choose from. <laughs> uh, depth was such a ridiculous issue in that first year. Got a little bit better 
last year. Well, a little bit better. They won 11 games. I think it worked out fine, but it's considerably more even now. Um, And so figuring that out with this added amount of depth is honestly just so exciting because it almost feels like this is the first spring ball where Tennessee really has a full football team. Um, And that's, I mean, that, that's just an interesting proposition because Hypel has had to work through this paper thin, you know, we, we literally don't have a dude to play that position. So we got to move this guy over from safety to go play cornerback. And we're, you know, they're having to adapt all of these things. Again, it was mostly on defense, but it, it feels like they, they legit have the warm bodies now. And so what do all of those guys look like? Uh, and the offensive line, I mean, that's incredibly intriguing because you're replacing the, in my opinion, the best offensive line in the uh, uh, offensive lineman in the SEC last season, and Darnell Wright, who's going to be a draft pick, uh, first round draft pick probably. Uh, and that, those are big shoes to fill. And so it's it's interesting to hear that they're kind of just sort of trying everything out. It's like, oh, this guy, uh, we we thought he was going to be here. Well, actually, he's playing over here. We're not sure exactly where they're going to go. That stuff, you know, sure. We always give the caveat at the beginning of all the spring practices, fall practices, just sort of be like, don't put too much stock in it because you always get excited about something. And then when the season actually comes, nothing really happens with it. With my, but as far as this goes, I mean, I think they got to be trying to figure that out. I, I think that's, that's one of the most important things on this entire football team. And I'm sure that they are, there is major urgency to get that offensive line situation figured out. And, and so uh, that's, that is interesting. I'm, I'm, it'll be kind of fascinating to see exactly where they go there. The defensive line, the cornerbacks, I mean, just choose your position on defense. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be kind of interesting to see where they go, but, um, one day is not enough to figure any of that out, but it, those are some, uh, some good notes. Yeah. And Ed asked here, is Joe Milton going to start Josh Heupel? I mean, we all know Joe Milton is going to be the starter to start the season unless he gets injured or something like that. Heupel, pretty much without committing to Milton in a way, did today by talking about that he expects him to play at an elite level, high level. He wants competition there, which you should at every position before you kind of like deem Joe Milton as the official starter. He did seem a little, I wouldn't say concerned, but he made a reference to how thin the depth chart is at quarterback when he was asked about how quickly Nico would be pushed in spring practice. And he's like, he's, you know, he's going to be pushed extremely quickly is exactly what he said, because as he po- po- pointed out, just look at where we're at at the quarterback position that they don't have another scholarship guy beyond Nico. You have some walk-ons that would have to step into that role if something happens to your top two quarterbacks. So that obviously if Milton goes down, you're hoping that Nico is ready to go uh, pretty quickly. And he's a mature kid. Obviously, there's going to be some learning adjustments, some some growing pains there, just like for any highly touted quarterback. Nico goes down and you're in uh, you know, a world of hurt where suddenly you're just hoping to get to six and six and, and get to bowl eligibility. Obviously, that would be the nightmare scenario. Let's not speak that into existence. But yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. Hypo brought that up in that press conference today. He... He said there is major urgency to get, or what was it? I actually wrote it down. Great urgency was his exact quote um, concerning Nico because that that quarterback room, while it is excellent, it is incredibly thin. I mean, they just don't have dudes beyond the top two guys. And what are you going to do when you have to turn to a third option? Uh, and and so at at a minimum, you got to get Nico figured out uh, at least for him to be serviceable in an sec football game. Uh, and obviously by doing that, you're going to set him up for success in the future, hopefully. Uh, but it's, that's a, that's a, uh, I don't want to say it's concerning. It's not necessarily concerning as long as those dudes stay healthy and the chances are that they will. And, you know, everybody say their prayers about the health for those guys. But, um, I, I, I just think that as far as that goes, Everybody's going to want to see Nico. Oh, is he going to, is he going to start? Is he going to do all this stuff? That's just not gonna, I don't think in my personal assessment of the situation, I think it's, it's going to be Milton until they have a real good reason for it not to be. I will put yeah, it. I don't way, think, I, I think. Yeah. I don't think Hypel is, you know, some coaches in the past at Tennessee, 
uh, Butch Jones and Jeremy Pruitt specifically at times didn't really seem like they wanted to play uh, true freshmen quite as early. I don't think any coach wants to have to rely on a true freshman, but I think Josh Heupel, you know, he's going to put the best guy out there uh, no matter what position that is. I just, I don't think there's any way that can be Nico as talented as he is, as mature as he is, as good of a leader and teammate as he's already proven to be. There's just so much to learn. This offense is, yeah, it's been described as simple, and, and it is to some extent, but it's still unique in the way that they run it. And you got to be making really fast decisions. And Hendon Hooker was so much better in year two of the system than he was in year one because the experience factor. This is going to be Joe Milton's third year in this system, which is almost hard to believe that, that he will have spent three years at Tennessee after transferring from Michigan. But there's just no way that Nico can have the the knowledge that Joe has already that has he's built over these past few seasons. And to me, more than talent, that's the difference. And, it, and it's not like Joe Milton's not immensely talented. We know that he's extremely talented and, and he showed it in that Clemson game and every chance he got last season. So it's not like you're dealing with a situation where at Clemson when Kelly Bryant was the starter and just he just wasn't really getting it done and they had to move to Trevor Lawrence. It wasn't that Trevor Lawrence left them no choice, uh, that he was just playing. I mean, obviously he played really well, but that was more of where the starter wasn't. It just wasn't working out and they had to make the change. Something like that would have to happen for Nico to leapfrog Milton. On, I don't think he's going to come there and just – if Milton's playing well, Nico plays well, Nico jumps him somehow. I, I don't see that happening, mostly because of the experience. Yeah, I just don't. I, you see a guy go out and beat a team that won a national title, what, three years ago or whatever it was last time Clemson did for me, four at this point, whatever it was, and he went out there and, and disposed of them. That's going to earn you a ton there if that's the level that you're playing at, because to expect a freshman to come in in a unique offense and play like that is on, it's honestly just unrealistic. I would love for Nico to be in his final form already <laughs> where he, where I think he's going to end up. Yeah, that would be amazing, but it's just, uh, you know, father time doesn't work like that. Unfortunately, you just, he's going to have to get it figured out over time. So this conversation would be a lot different if Milton would have struggled against Clemson. I, yeah, I can't imagine if if that would have happened and if Taven Jackson would have stayed, that would have been a real you know uh, story this spring. Who starts? Who's the backup? How's the depth chart shake out? Uh, while Heupel doesn't like you know the lack of depth that he has at quarterback, I imagine he's at least he doesn't have to worry about the decision being that difficult or that scrutinized. Nobody's going to fault him for going with Joe Milton uh, over Nico to start the season, giving him a, a decently long leash to see how he does. Based on the way he played against Clemson, like I said, that that makes his decision a lot easier, and, and there's not really much there to criticize. Absolutely, it is what it is. They, again, they'll they'll play until they have a a true reason not to, in my opinion. Uh, but otherwise, as far as spring practice goes, uh, it's one day. We haven't yeah. seen much, um, and you know that you don't. I don't want to say they haven't even really started the real work yet realistically for like media members and things you don't even see the real work ever <laughs> like, like that just isn't something that tennessee is going to go and give out to media members because of the way i mean that's college football across the board now just teams they don't let media members see that stuff so uh the public doesn't get to see it either but uh you know we'll, we'll have to get past one day to really have a hard take on on much of anything but there were there's some good news and notes there 